Hi, my name is Bryn Boslett and I am an infectious disease doctor at the University of California, San Francisco. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the epidemiology and viral structure of the influenza virus. If we return to our major human pathogens map, we are in the viruses section. Under the viruses section, we are in the RNA viruses subdivision and we will be specifically discussing influenza today. By the end of this session, you should be able to recognize the impact of the influenza virus on worldwide morbidity and mortality and describe the structure of the influenza virus and how it relates to epidemics and pandemics. Influenza occurs globally, infecting up to one-fifth of the world's population each year. Illnesses can result in hospitalization and death, mainly among high-risk groups, which includes the very young, the elderly, and the chronically ill. Worldwide, these annual epidemics are estimated to result in about 3 to 5 million cases of severe disease and about 250 to 500,000 deaths each year. The spread of influenza within a community is rapid, typically occurring over a period of two weeks. Influenza demonstrates an annual attack rate estimated at 5 to 10 percent in adults, but up to 20 or 30 percent in children. Because of this, oftentimes the first sign of an influenza epidemic is children missing school and an increase in pediatrician visits for fever, pneumonia, or otitis media, which can occur in association with the viral illness. Next, the virus hits adults, resulting in absenteeism from work, and hospitalizations due to complications of the infection. When the virus spreads to infect an entire community, city, state, or country, significant morbidity or mortality results, especially in the elderly. There have been several occasions in history that the influenza virus has grown from epidemic to pandemic proportions. A pandemic differs from an epidemic in that the infection spreads across larger territories, such as continents or even worldwide, affecting millions of people. Let's discuss the properties of the influenza virus that make it capable of causing such widespread disease. The influenza viruses are the only members of the orthomyxo family of viruses. If you have trouble remembering this family name, just think of your friendly orthopedic surgeon getting mixed up about whether he got his flu shot this year. The orthomyxoviruses are spherical virions, which are comprised of single-stranded RNA within a helical capsid, surrounded by an outer lipoprotein envelope. This virus also carries an RNA polymerase, which translates the negative polarity genome into messenger RNA. Unlike paramyxoviruses, which are a similar family, the orthomyxoviruses have a segmented RNA genome usually comprised of eight pieces. Finally, viral replication occurs in the nucleus of the infected cell, which is a feature unique amongst RNA viruses and shared only with the retroviruses and the hepatitis D virus. The viral envelope is covered with two types of glycoprotein spikes, one with hemagglutinin activity and the other with neuraminidase activity. The function of hemagglutinin is to bind to cell surface receptors, which are sialic acid receptors, but are also called neuraminic acid receptors, thus activating fusion of the host cell membrane with the virion membrane and dumping the viral genome into the host cell. This is the initiating step of infection. Sialic acid receptors are found on both respiratory epithelial cells and also red blood cells. So viruses that have hemagglutinin on their surfaces can also act to agglutinate, or clump, red blood cells, giving this protein its name. Finally, hemagglutinin is antigenic, meaning that neutralizing antibodies directed against it will block binding and prevent infection. Neuraminidase has two roles. First, neuraminidase cleaves sialic acid, which is critical for the release of progeny virus from the infected cell. As viruses are assembled, they bud out of the host cell membrane, but the new virion's hemagglutinin is bound to the host cell's receptors until cleaved by neuraminidase. 
Afterwards, the virion escapes to infect a new cell. The other role of neuraminidase is to degrade the protective mucus layer of the respiratory epithelial tract, enhancing the ability of the virus to reach these cells. Like hemagglutinin, neuraminidase is antigenic, but antibodies directed against it do not neutralize infectivity. However, these antibodies do seem to reduce disease burden, perhaps decreasing the spread of virus. Within the orthomyxo family are three types of influenza, named A, B, and C. This grouping is based on the internal ribonuclear proteins. Influenza A has the ability to infect both humans and other mammals, as well as birds, and this characteristic makes it responsible for several influenza pandemics, which we will discuss further. Influenza B infects humans only, and while it is capable of causing influenza epidemics, it does not cause large-scale pandemics. Influenza C also infects humans only, but it causes only mild respiratory tract infections and is not responsible for large outbreaks of influenza. Within the subgroup of influenza A, there are many subtypes separated by their differences in hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. 16 different subtypes of hemagglutinin and nine different subtypes of neuraminidase have been described. Influenza A subtypes are named by their specific combinations of hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, such as H1N1. At this point, you might be wondering, if humans are able to develop protective antibodies against hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, why do we continue to have yearly epidemics of influenza? The answer lies in the antigenic changes that occur within the influenza virus. During viral replication, mutations can occur in the hemagglutinin or neuraminidase proteins, leading to minor changes in the antigenic nature of these proteins. The resulting new strains are only partially recognized by our immune system, leading to seasonal influenza disease. This phenomenon is referred to as antigenic drift and it occurs in all types of influenza virus. Sometimes a more drastic change of antigens occurs, from which totally different types of hemagglutinin and or neuraminidase emerge. This phenomenon is called antigenic shift, and it only occurs with influenza A because that is the only group of influenza that infects both humans and animals. Let's discuss the mechanism in more detail. There are a few ways in which antigenic shift can occur. First, a strain of influenza that previously infected only animals might make a leap into humans. When the antigenicity of the virus is significantly different from what the human host has previously encountered, pre-existing immunity is not effective and widespread disease can occur. There is evidence that birds, particularly waterfowl such as ducks, are a common source of these new strains of influenza. Birds may pass their virus directly to humans or may first pass the virus to an intermediate host, such as swine, who then passes it along to humans. The other mechanism of antigenic shift occurs when influenza A from two different species infect the same cell. When this happens, entire segments of the influenza RNA genome may be swapped between the different influenza virus strains. Again, birds are a common source of these new RNA segments, but the reassortment event often occurs in pigs because they can be infected with both avian and human strains of influenza. Reassortment can occur in humans as well, but this is thought to happen less often. When antigenic shift occurs, the novel influenza A virus is able to cause pandemic infection. The pandemics caused by influenza A virus tend to occur every 10 to 20 years, and there have been four major pandemics in the last 100 years. The largest of these occurred in 1918 due to the H1N1 virus and was one of the most deadly natural disasters in human history. While the official death toll was over 20 million, some estimates suggest that the number was closer to 100 million deaths as a result of this influenza pandemic, and more Americans died than from World War I, II, Vietnam, 
and the Korean wars combined. What's more, young people seem to be the hardest hit, although this might have been augmented by wartime spread of disease among malnourished troops in close quarters. In 2009, H1N1 again reared its ugly head. The CDC estimates that between 43 and 89 million people were infected with H1N1 between April 2009 and April 2010, once again disproportionately affecting young people. They estimate between 9,000 and 18,000 H1N1 related deaths occurred in the U.S. alone. A total of 74 countries were affected by this pandemic. By November 2009, mass vaccination against H1N1 was instituted and 80 million people were vaccinated, likely mitigating the total potential impact of this outbreak. In 1997, avian influenza A, also known as H5N1, was first documented as causing a severe form of human influenza in Hong Kong. Please recall that most recombination events leading to new strains of influenza have their root in birds, particularly waterfowl. Therefore, although this particular strain of influenza is called avian flu, most strains are avian in origin, so it's somewhat of a misnomer. Following the 1997 cases, in 2003-2004, there was a large epidemic among poultry populations in Asia, and millions of chickens were killed in order to stop the spread of the disease. However, despite these efforts, there were over 100 confirmed cases of the virus in humans, although almost exclusively in people who had direct interactions with poultry. However, several human-to-human -human transmissions did occur among close contacts. To date, there have been documented human cases in 15 countries with approximately a 60% mortality. In 2013, another so-called avian influenza virus known as H7N9, has emerged in humans in China, causing severe respiratory illness in all patients and death in one-third of those infected. Poultry is again thought to be the source, and so far there is no sustained human-to-human -human transmissions. However, these cases raise significant concern for an avian-human recombination event, which could lead to the next antigenic shift and influenza pandemic.